That's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I hope this answer your question, Raj. Raj, you know, it provide like you can go and like you can like it will take to your that particular error and you can check. Okay. So let me go to next slide. So I have already set up the context. Let me go. What is a universal API management? As you discuss uh, with the universal API management, you can govern secure secure the APIs with a single control plane. Basically, okay. it doesn't matter whether your API is mule soft or it's a non mule soft API, and also it doesn't matter where it is located. It can be on premise, it can be cloud, or it can be anywhere. It can be on like you know on like on bare metal server on virtual machines, you know. And also, this is a technology agnostic. Right. So, what are the advantage? It allow us. It allow the organization or enterprise to control, manage, secure, govern, and discover your API from the single pane of glass or under the single umbrella, or we can call it from the single platform. You can see like all your API listed uh, under the single platform. You can check. You can just uh, like use that particular single platform to troubleshoot uh, your API. You can check uh, monitoring. You can uh, monitoring and API telemetries and those kind of things from the single platform. It can adapt any architecture. Basically, this concept can adapt any architecture. It doesn't matter. If it's monolithic. It's a microservices. It's API led connectivity. It doesn't matter. And you can govern all your API from the single platform. So this is the concept. Uh, recently, MuleSoft has launched in 2021, and in 2022, they have come up with some few products as a part of universal API management. Or they have improved your existing product. Okay, so let me come like uh, the main focus of this particular session is the flex gateway basically. So the flex gateway is basically it's a ultra fast, it's a super fast. Uh, it design and manage the API running anywhere basically. So flex gateway is uh, using the Envoy service. So Envoy service is nothing. It's a CN CF project and it is the one of the fastest, high performance and low latency service till now. Okay, so Envoy like MuleSwap Flex Gateway is using the Envoy basically. Envoy it's nothing; it's kind of sidecar. Okay, and it's this is like a CNCF project. It's an open source CNCF project, and it's a high performance, uh, low latency, and very fast service till now. So, what are the advantages we are getting from Flex Gateway? You can secure, manage API located anywhere. You can extend the AnyPoint platform capability to MuleSwap. As well as non mule soft API, like you can apply API policies, you can see API telemetry, you can apply API alerts, those kind of things can be take like you know, uh, can be can be taken care of using the flex gateway. You can achieve the consistent security and governance across every API in the operating in any environment. So basically, as I mentioned, you can apply any out of box policy to your API, it contains JWT validation policy, basic authentication policies. Like you can apply all securities and everything like IP allow list, IP block list, those kind of things. You can easily integrate uh, uh, with DevOps and CI/CD workflows. So you can like you know publish your API on the Flex Gateway using CI/CD pipelines. Even you can it have a capability to create a Flex Gateway using CI/CD basically. Okay, there are two more so in which you can set up the Flex Gateway. One can be local mode, the other can be the connected mode. In connected mode, like your API will get registered in the AnyPoint platform, and you can apply any out of box capability like AnyPoint monitoring, uh, API policies, API telemetry. You can apply API contracts, and and even you you will see your API get your Flex gateway get registered in the AnyPoint platform. In local mode, you are you your API will not get registered in AnyPoint platform. And you will not be able to apply any out of box uh, any point monitoring or API telemetry. Like you have to manage a YAML descriptor file on your local uh, where you are setting up your Flex Gateway. Basically, in that you have to define, you have to publish the API to Flex Gateway in local mode via those files. And even if you want to define any policies for the, those API, you have to define in that particular YAML descriptor file. I'm going to show you in demonstration. So as I mentioned, there are three uh, main feature. We are three main advantage we are getting from. Flex Gateway, it's a flexible, as I mentioned, you can deploy Flex Gateway anywhere. It can use any architecture. It's a technology agnostic. It's a high performance. As I mentioned, it's using the Envoy based service. So Envoy base is a high performance and low latency service till now. So you can consider this uh, Flex Gateway as a, you know, a high pop, like uh, Flex Gateway is a high performance service. But right now we don't have any benchmark now. So like and we are still waiting like MuleSwap to release those benchmarks basically. We don't have a benchmark yet. 
and it's a super fast and ultra fast okay so flex gateway like uh, installation can be done in the three ways you can it can be done as a kubernetes ingress controller it can be done uh, as a docker container and it can be done as a linux service so in linux also it support u ubuntu and like uh, uh, two or three operating system but it doesn't support rhel the red hat of op like linux operating system and it also doesn't support windows uh, operating system directly but there's a workaround you can definitely set up the flex gateway on rhel and the windows also by installing the docker container or docker engine on your windows machine and rhel and you can set up the flex gateway on that particular docker engine basically which is running on windows or rhel right so these are the few workarounds you can do that then flex gateway authentication mechanism for setting up the flex gateway you will definitely when you are registering the flex gateway in any point platform or even in the local mode you require like you can use any uh, three kind of authentication mode any one of the three kind of authentication mode which is any point username and the password or token and the connected app basically okay let me come up with the uh, flex gateway connected mode versus local mode so there are parameters control plane uh, for connected mode it's any point platform and for local mode it's a local management operations logging you can use any point platform advanced logging but it required the titanium license then for local mode you can use splunk ela any third party logging tool api monitoring you can use the out of box any point monitoring and the api manager matrix or telemetry for local mode you may require some tools like prometheus grafana any other like you know, any other tools basically and for flex gateway management we using the many point platform basically we can manage everything uh, using any point platform here we have to manage in local mode we have to manage using local yammer descriptor files api policy you can definitely apply the api policy using the api manager here the policy needs to be applied using local yammer descriptor file you have to give you know you have to use the policy ref uh, tag or attribute and you have to define what policy you need to apply basically all this parameter you have to write in the yaml file but where is in the connected mode you can do it directly from the api manager any question okay i hope my speed is good now next uh, we will discuss about some api uh, flex gateway patterns so either you can use a single flex gateway for the multiple apis that there might be possibility within your organization you may have a multiple api written in the multiple technology you have a mulesoft api you have a spring boot api you have a node js api you have a .NET api and you can use the single flex gateway and this flex gateway whatever you are seeing on the screen it's in the connected mode your flex gateway get registered in your any point platform basically and here i am using a single flex gateway for all your api right and then i can publish my api to those flex gateway written in any technology basically and then, then i can apply any policies any like uh, i can view api metrics i can uh, enable api alert like policy violation response time in the api manager right and also uh, you can set up the multiple replicas in the flex gateway for high availability scaling or to improve the performance like you know if you are set up multiple replicas i think for one flex gateway you can set up up to eight uh, replicas right so in this uh, architecture if you see i have only have a single flex gateway which is managing all the apis uh, written in the multiple technology and they may be located anywhere basically just we have to ensure that like whatever api uh, we want to publish to the flex gateway they must be must be reachable from the flex gateway you may need to open the firewall uh, rule between your flex gateway and where is your api located basically so those kind of things has to be taken care at a network layer so that that will be not handled by you know flex gateway it's your choice like whatever api you want to publish to flex gateway that must must be reachable from the flex gateway those kind of firewall rule or networking rule or security rule you need to be taken care basically okay the next architecture where like you can use the multiple flex gateway uh, or we can call this as a flex gateway as a micro gateway so either like there might be uh, n number of ways like you can set up the flex gateway here i am showing a technology wise so if i have a mulesoft api for that i can have a separate i can either use the directly or either i can use the flex gateway also then i have a spring boot api i have a separate flex gateway for that i have a node js api i have a separate flex gateway for that then i have a dotnet api 
I have a separate flex gateway for that basically. So this is uh, related to technology, right? So here, like and each and every flex gateway got registered in your AnyPoint platform with a multiple replica. So replica will provide the high ability scaling in the high performance, right? The second way you can set up the flex gateway on the basis of your API led connectivity layers, basically. So you may have like a system layer, you can have a separate flex gateway for that. You may have a process API, you may have a separate flex gateway for that. You may have a explicit by the separate flex gateway for that. Because why I'm saying like your system API may have a different security rule and different ways of entering, right? And you may require the different policies. Same thing applies to process API, same thing applies to the experience API. The third way, so each like now, if you don't want to do via API led connectivity, like API led connectivity layers, right? You can also do depending on the line of business. So even like, you know, uh, depending on for each line of business, you can have a, like one uh, flex gateway. And also like for each line of business, you can like you can mix line of business and API led connectivity layer basically where you can uh, like each line of business can have a three uh, flex gateway, one for system process and the experience like that. So there are various architecture you can follow. Apart from that, like you can have a one flex gateway for each and every API. So one flex gateway, one API, second flex gateway, have a second API. Uh, like you may want more security and different entry point for each and every API. In that case, you can have a different different flex gateway for each and every API, right? So there are various architecture trends you can follow and with, uh, patterns you can follow for the flex gateway. So just give me a second. Okay. So, so basically when you are talking about the flex gateway in the connected mode, so this is my Kubernetes cluster and I set up a flex gateway within that my Kubernetes. So we call this as the ingress, ingress it's, it's nothing, it's kind of load balancer from where the request can enter into the system and, it, and the ingress will route the request to the proper API, right? Then I have a two API. So I publish this two particular API to this particular uh, flex gateway. Basically, whenever the client send the request, it will come to ingress. Ingress will validate the request. It will check whether all policies and every, everything has been uh, applied is correct or we are, or are getting the correct data for those policies. If yes, then it will forward the request. The request either go to a call, depending on like, you know, uh, account service or the payment service, right? Then in this connected mode, you can use all out-of-box capability, runtime manager, API manager, any point monitoring. Then also you can use some kind of uh, out-of-box API matrix and telemet or telemetry basically, right? In case of local mode, as I mentioned, like uh, you have to like define all your policies and like routes and everything into the YAML descriptor file. So, and like, you know, uh, this is the local management operation. The way of routing will remain same. But only thing your API will not get registered in the any point platform. You have to manage. You have to manage maintain those YAML descriptor file. Also, you will require a third party logging tool and third party API telemetry and the metrics basically. Example Grafana. Then recently I am setting up this particular architecture basically, where like I have a multiple instance of the Kubernetes. Like for system API, I have a separate Kubernetes instance. I have a process API, I have a, I, like that also have a separate Kubernetes cluster. Then I have a experience API that have a separate Kubernetes cluster basically, right? So like my system API is in the secure zone, my process API is in the IAP tire and my experience API is in the web tire and that is directly exposed to your external client basically. And so for that, and also uh, there's a requirement, the data should not, a metadata should not go out of my secure zone. So in case of connected mode, your metadata will be definitely go to any point platform. So you can see the any point monitoring, like metrics on the any point monitoring and API telemetry and those kind of things. So that was one of the requirement. So what I have done, so we have set up the like a flex gateway for secure zone in the local mode. So no data can flow outside the secure zone. In case of app tire and in case of web tire, we have something like we have set up this uh, flex gateway in the connected mode, right? So it can use some out of box capability and like we don't have any special requirement there. Like only only one requirement like uh, experience API can connect process API, no other way. And process API can connect system API that we have taken care uh, using the security rules and all those things, right? And like apart from that uh, for the flex gateway deployed in the local mode. So we have using some external uh, logging tool and 
you know external monitoring tool basically so we have something called dynatrace and all those things basically right so this is you can call this flex gateway in the hybrid mode so we have seen three patterns flex gateway in the connected mode flex gateway in the uh, local mode flex gateway in the hybrid mode basically so that is also possible like you can you can use any one of the architecture or any one of the flex gateway pattern depending on your requirements right any question yeah we have few questions which are Yes, definitely. Like if you if your flex gateway is doing well, and if your app have a memory leakage, right? So flex gateway cannot do anything. Yeah, flex gateway will take care. Like you know, if your app is responding, let consider I got a request on my flex gateway, and my flex gateway is low latency, high performance. But if your app is responding after five or six seconds, right? Flex gateway cannot do anything there. Your app should be also responding faster in that case. Okay. Is this answer your question, Satya Narayan? So as I mentioned, you can deploy Flex Gateway anywhere. It can be on the Kubernetes ingress controller, right? Uh, it can be on the Docker container. It can be on Linux or any operating system, basically. See, it's like see, it, this is not responsibility of the Flex Gateway. Like it depends where you are deploying your API, basically. If you are deploying on the Kubernetes controller, I think we can use the same port number, right? And like if you are deploying on Docker container, and now it depends, like. How is your Docker setup? Like if you are like de deploying your API, if you are, uh, already have a container, which is on port 8081, and that particular container have only one, already have an application, right? So now you try to deploy a say, uh, other container with 8081, it will not allow you, right? It will give a port binding error, basically. So that's not a responsibility of the Flex Gateway. It's a responsibility of your infrastructure. I will come on the Joy, this is a good question. I will definitely come on this particular question. So Joy, like uh, as I mentioned, let's consider what, what you require when you create a proxy. Can anybody answer this question? So uh, for creating proxy, we need to have an implementation uh, URL. Yeah, that's or, fine. Or an Even for API. Flex Gateway, for flex gateway require the implementation URL, right? It's the same thing, but why flex gateway? Right. Okay. I will take come on this. Proxy requires mule runtime. Correct. Correct. So basically the proxy require a mule runtime basically, right? So basically like uh, you cannot deploy proxy outside the mule runtime. Like if you want to deploy proxy, you will definitely require a mule runtime, right? Correct. So like if there might be customer who just want to use a API manager capability for non mule soft API, right? Earlier, what is happening? So for uh, for publishing uh, for or for enabling uh, API manager capability for non mule soft API, you require the runtime manager also. For getting the runtime manager, you have to you need a course also, right? Right. So for that, a mule soft has come up with some concept called flex gateway, where like you can use a api manager independent of your runtime manager basically like you will definitely require the runtime manager for setting up the flex gateway but you don't require a mule runtime basically okay you will not require the mule runtime like uh, flex gateway runs independent of your mule runtime is this answer your question joy this and also proxy is proxy is not using like uh, services like envoy Right. So whereas Flex Gateway is using the services like Envoy, basically, which is super fast, high performance and low latency till now. I hope this answer your question. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, one more related question in this. So uh, for Mule Runtime, that that is like an individual, you know, worker or course, right? Every proxy has its own container. And yeah. Yes. Yeah, see, so, if you are deploying a proxy, right? You may like you can you can deploy the proxy on the customer hosted mule runtime also. You can deploy the proxy on the RT app also, right? You can deploy the proxy on the cloud app also. But it will always require a mule runtime. It will definitely consume extra cores and memories and everything, right? Correct, Joy? Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. I mean, like uh, for licensing purpose, I will not talk because you know this is the technical meetups mostly. If you need a license related information, you can you need to reach the mule soft. 
I'm really sorry. Even I have information, I cannot give it. So please uh, reach news of this video on this. Okay. Uh, if you have any technical question, I will try to clear it. <laughs> that licensing is a bit, uh, you know, uh, separate topic, right? Uh, you hope hope you understand me, right, on this particular part. Okay. So what I will do, let me switch to my other laptop where I can show you a demonstration and what we will going to cover in demonstration. Let me show you. So now we will try to set up uh, this particular scenario where like we will set up a flex gateway on Kubernetes cluster and that flex gateway will connect to some external service, right? So this particular external service like doesn't have any API management capability, right? And I want to enable the API management capability and this external service is on non-use of. Also, okay. Also, we will try to uh, try to notice like what is happening in runtime manager, API manager, any point monitoring, and this will be the HTTP. And the second demo, how we can enable the HTTPS ingress basically. We will going to see the, uh, this two demo basically. Okay. So let me switch to my other laptop. So guys, just wait. If I in case I if I got this connected, so please wait. Are you still there? Yes, yes. Give me a second. Yeah. I'm just starting my other laptop. So we can have a quick uh, demo. So because last time what happened, like <laughs> my laptop got crashed in between the demo. So I want to ensure that it doesn't happen this time. Just I'm starting my Docker and all those things. Any question like till now? You can definitely, you know, replace a proxy to flex gateway. That is quite possible. You can do that. Hello, Abhishek, can you hear me? 
Yes, 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 yeah. okay. So, Praveen, like uh, service mesh basically, like uh, when you can use it, it's too base, right? And like uh, basically, the the whole uh, like logic behind creating service mesh, like if you have some application which is using like uh, Kubernetes, basically, right? Application running on the Kubernetes and using the Istio's, like you know. In, and if you want to enable the API management capability for those kind of services, right? So you can use the service mess. Okay, so you can use the uh, service mess basically. So like the only the limitation with the service mess is that like your your APIs must be running on the Kubernetes and they are using some kind of Istio service mess on there. So then then you can move those uh, APIs and or you can enable the API management capability for those API. But here on the flex gator, you can do for anything, right? You don't, it doesn't matter like whether, where is your API running? Okay, so let me share my screen again quickly. I can quickly start with demo. Just let me know once you can see my screen. Yes, we can see. Okay, so first thing like for, for this particular demo, what you require? You require a Docker desktop basically. You can have a Docker desktop, okay? Then you require a mini cube. In my case, I already have a mini cube, so it's very like you can go to Google and you can find the steps for installing the mini cube. So mini cube uh, installation. So you can. It's very uh, simple. It's a mini Kubernetes version. You can start it basically. So here, like you require two CPUs or more, two GB of free memory, twenty GB of free disk internet connection, and like uh, for Windows, like. Uh, you have to just uh, run this, copy this particular command, run on PowerShell, copy this particular command, run on PowerShell. Just make sure like uh, first thing, you have to download the EXE basically. This is the step one basically. First, make sure like all this prerequisite has been taken care. You can have a Docker also, you can have a virtual box, or Oracle virtual box, I mean any other things uh, it requires basically. Then installation, it depending on operating system, you can select the installation. For me, I select the Windows. I can download exe you can just run the exe once you have run the exe you just simply use this particular command copy this and run on the your uh, basically power cell the second command you just copy this again from here and just on run on your power cell and just give a command mini cube start so i just give mini cube start so let me maximize this mini cube start as soon as i give a mini cube start it will start my mini cube right and you can see the mini cube consoles and everything here okay so this is my mini cube container running on my Docker. Okay, and it's nothing, it's a mini version of Kubernetes. Right, these are the few uh, prerequisites you need to take care. Now we will start setting up the Flex Gateway step by step. So first I can log in into my AnyPoint platform. Okay, so I can give some name. So now the first step, we have to go to runtime manager. Let me log into my, uh, okay. So I have went to runtime manager. I can click on flex gateway. Okay, here you can say add gateway. One in runtime manager, you select your environment, then say flex gateway then say add gateway it will provide three operating system on environment but in our case i will go with kubernetes okay in my case either you can also use the k3d version of your uh, kubernetes but in this case i am using the mini cube so i don't want to execute this, execute this particular command because i am using the mini cube i just want to execute this particular docker pull mule shot so i want to pull the image i think i have already done that let me try once again it it will tell the image already exists you can run this particular command and if you go to Docker desktop, under the images, you can see that MuleSoft Flex Gateway 1.0.01. This is the latest uh, Flex Gateway image. Apart from that, you can also say Docker images. This is the command for getting all the images in this particular Docker engine. Okay. So now we have done our first step. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear. Okay. Now the second thing we have to register it in this if you see it is already using the authentication mode as a token so we don't have to do anything it will generate the token and everything from here if you have copy paste command from here otherwise we have to use some logging api to generate the token but in this case i can simply copy this command 
okay and like if you are using using the cell on linux you don't like uh, like you can simply you know change this gateway name and just run that command in my case i am not using the linux or something like that i am using the windows so i created one folder here uh, something called like you know users and i think i have some folder called flex gateway kuber right let me remove this three files so I have this particular folder. Let me open one notepad also. So if you are using the cell or any other command prompt, like, you know, you don't have to bring everything into one line. In my case, I have to do that because I'm using the windows. Okay, let, let me bring to one line. You have to give a gateway name. So what I will say, uh, I will say mule uh, demo GW app okay i will simply give this name so you have to just change the name of the gateway you can give any name and this is using the auth token so you don't have to just can you guys hear him Hello. Okay, he's joining. I just checked with him. Just give him two minutes. Okay, I'm back. Uh, sorry. So let me. Uh, can you see my screen yet? No. Like, uh, like you have seen. Like I have tried to download that particular email, right? But secondly, mm -hmm. like now we can see. It. Now we have to register our Flex Gateway in AnyPoint platform. I just copied the command from the AnyPoint platform, basically. So if you go to any point platform and once once you select like you know uh, Kubernetes add flex gateway here it command basically a docker and like you know it will give auth token and everything you don't have to generate it manually basically you can copy it from here now as I'm running this command on the Windows cram, com, uh, command prompt so I will not go I have to bring everything into the single line and also secondly if you see here we have something called PWD so PWD means current path Windows doesn't support this basically right so what I have done I have 
paste a full path where I want to uh, generate these three files basically. So once I will run, run this command, it will generate these three particular files, which like which contain like some certification certificate information as well as like how to communicate with your AnyPoint platform. So let me copy this uh, command quickly and let me open a command prompt and I can run it. So it's saying starting registration, please be patient. Okay, it's completed. Now in that particular directory, I can see these three file one, two, three, right? And now I will go to any point platform and I validate whether my API got registered or not. So now you will see this is my API just got registered. Mule demo GW app basically. Okay. Now we have done the first part where we are successfully registered our flex gateway. Okay. Now next step. Let go go back to that particular add gateway again. Kubernetes. Now I have to run this particular third command. I have to create a namespace which is known as a gateway. So basically, you can uh, copy this particular command and paste it here. So the namespace gateway has been created successfully. So now we will going to set up our ingress within this particular namespace. So namespace it's a kind of environment in your Kubernetes. So you can have multiple namespaces basically. Now I want to set up my ingress in this particular uh, namespace gateway. The next thing I have to create a secret. So basically in Kubernetes, if you know, if you want to uh, like, uh, if you want to encrypt your certificates and all those things, like you can use this uh, kubectl minus and gateway create secret. So I will copy this particular command. And let me take back to my notepad again. I can remove this particular first command. Okay. Now I have to replace this you you uh, like uh, this particular you you ID of your file. So how can you get it? Like you can see the three file has been generated, right? You can copy the UID from that. I will copy this UID. I will replace. Okay. I will replace it here. Have to bring in one line why because i'm using the windows command prompt copy this command i can quickly uh, run on this particular folder basically yeah your secret has been successfully registered okay you have done that right the next thing now I require the Helm basically. Helm is like something like uh, it is used to manage your Kubernetes and we need to register our Flex Gateway in that particular Helm also. So for that you can download the Helm utility basically. So I already downloaded the Helm utility for Windows, right? So I, I have, you can go to like Helm and you can download it. It's very simple. Let me register the Helm, copy this command and I will register this. It has been done. It's already exist. And in, in, in your case, if it doesn't exist, it will register it. Now copy Helm repo up. So it, it should say happy Helming here. Yeah. So now it's good. We have registered our API. Now the important thing, we have to register the ingress. Now before that, before I register the ingress, I want to show you one command. So minikube dashboard. It should open a browser, a URL in browser where you can see a Kubernetes instance. Basically, right now there's a nothing. You can see there's a gateway uh, namespace which we have created. If I click on gateway, it's nothing is there, right? Also, I want to show you a few more commands like uh, I can say uh, Minikube service list. What are the service list on Minikube basically? Right. So these are the few services uh, having namespace, default, cube system, Kubernetes. So these are some few services. If you want to see the uh, ports also, you can see kubectl get ports. There's a no ports, right? Then I can say kubectl get namespaces. It will give all the namespaces. Right now the gateway is our namespaces, which we are going to use. The next thing I have to create a ingress basically. Right, so I will copy this particular command. I will just paste it here, and like uh, this is again required the helm for registering the ingress. I will just uh, you have to replace the UUID file again. So this UUID like whatever secret name we have given, right? That is only UUID only. 
so i can copy this i can go to my you know like uh, where it is it's under user then under flex gateway cuber i can copy this just change it copy helm is there only so i just run it ingress doesn't exist it will try to install it so once you will see like you know your status will i will require this command also i will just keep copy ready so if you see flex gateway once see now you can see one replica your ingress has been successfully created right also you can execute that particular command uh, which i have just now copy it will give like you know so you got the ingress uh, on http as well as on the https there are two ingress has been created under the namespace gateway now i will use other command mini cube dashboard okay. now it should show something under the gateway you select the gateway it will show ports and everything you can see ingress you know so you can see all the details and if you want to like uh, edit the ingress uh, information you can uh, see it from here okay so now we have successfully created our ingress so ingress or uh, like running on the port 80 for http and ingress running on the uh, port 443 for https right now we have done that the other thing like if you want to make sure like everything is running fine you know so we can also do one thing so let me open a new i will just say control c here we can say mini cube status so it will tell everything everything is co configured now i can say cube cube ctl is nothing it's kind of utility which can which call the kubernetes api uh, to get the appropriate result basically get ports still uh, okay under i will just change the namespace to gateway under the gateway we have a one pod right uh, that is the ingress right same way i can get a like you know port uh, or service list also mini cube service list minus n gateway this will give a service list so right now i have this particular gateway and this is the url right for your gateway basically so now the problem what will happen this uh, urls are the private so right now i have a i have a windows operating system that is the external to my docker okay so i will going to show you how we can access the url a private url from your windows because i have done some virtualization on my machine so that's why the docker is running right so there are two environment one is the docker and one is the windows machine and they are separate from each other basically okay just keep this in mind so i cannot directly access this url from my windows so for accessing this url from my windows i will tell you something hello yes yes we can hear you you are saying you, i am not audible i am audible right yes. no no earlier we were saying that okay okay i thought like i read your message now okay yeah. you are you are getting my point right what what we have done right now so now we have done everything we have set up the flex gateway everything and here we can see our ingress and everything the next thing i have an api let me show that api i have one world time zones i'm i'm taking some external uh, api i just want to you know explain you so you can take your own api so this is my api and this particular api doesn't have like uh, simply like you know it's not secure like anybody can access that particular api so now what i have to do so here i can go to the apis i can click on add api Now, in this add API, you get a three option where you want to publish your API to Flex Gateway, Mule Gateway, and Service Mesh. So it will like I will say Flex Gateway, and it will say like or uh, it will show all the API, uh, Flex Gateway in your runtime manager, and it will allow you to select only that gateway which is in the connected state. So this is what I will say next. In your case, if you have any RAML or Open API specification, you directly import that. But in my case, I don't have that, so I can simply write some name. Time zone API flex, and I can select HTTP type because here I don't have to provide any RAML and Open API spec. I can say next. Once I will say next, I will take just a implementation URI. I don't have to take a complete URI.
okay so you have to provide the implementation URA HTTP world time I will just provide this much and in advanced option I will just change the port 80 because my ingress is running on port 80 if I select HTTP in case if I select the HTTPS it should be 443 as I should I shown you right so on your ingress if you see it's running on port 80 on HTTP and port 43 okay that's why I will change port from 8081 to 80 I will just say next just review everything just save and deploy okay so now it is deploying your api so now what i will do this is my ingress http url i will copy this and let's try to browse from here http asia kolkata it will not work so next thing what i can do go to my mini cube uh, under mini cube okay then I can they see URL, can paste it. That's it, like it's still starting. Yeah, we got a successful response. So from Minikube, I can access this URL, but from browser, I cannot do that. Like you can, you got a some response. Like So now you, you need a, some tunnel URL basically, which can bridge the gap between your uh, external client and your ingress ex private URL. So to get that URL, we need to run one command. So I can do a mini cube service and I will give a service name, which is ingress. So if you see what's your service name, the ingress, okay? Your service name is ingress. Then I can say, I have to give a namespace where your service exists. It's under namespace gateway. Then you can say minus minus URL. Okay, so the first URL you need to pick up because it's HTTP URL basically. Copy this and just browse now. Asia slash Kolkata. You got a successful response, right? Now, next thing we have seen that, like next thing now we will try to apply some kind of policy there. No, I think we lost him. Okay, he's trying to run again. Internet is some internet issues. Sorry for this technical issues we are having today. And thank you for the patience. He's just joining back. Guys, I'm really sorry because uh, because of some rainfall, there's some connection issue. Uh, really sorry for that. That's fine. Like uh, where I miss, like I have I show you like uh, how to apply the policies or like. Uh, no, I... You were showing that and uh, suddenly. Okay. Lost. But uh, like how to access the API outside the mini cube? You got that point, right? Right. Mm -hmm. We have I showcased that. Now I will going to showcase how to apply the policies. So basically, you can go to API Manager and on that particular API instance, and you can say API policy. And in this case, I think I need to apply a basic authentication. Yeah, I will apply basic authentication next. Admin. I can say password admin. 
See, generally, like uh, you don't have to uh, create a any tunnel you uh, tunneling URL if you are setting on actual Kubernetes. Basically, you may require some kind of external uh, load balancer for that, right? So, in this case, like uh, everything is local, right? So I don't have that much of uh, like uh, things, right? So I have to show show like that only. Let me go back. I have applied the policy. Let me find out the URL again. If you keep on running this command, this URL will keep on changing. Okay, but in actual scenario, it will not happen like that. You can use the private URL, which can connect to any public load balancer or something like that. Let me. The policy applied may take time. Let me close everything. Let me check it. Or also, let me check on Minikube also, like uh, CURL. Let me check whether the policy is applied or not. Okay. Let's wait, it takes some time for policy to get applied. And here you can start seeing some kind of metrics also. So let's wait for a few seconds. So you can see like, you know, uh, how many requests fail with what kind of errors and all those things. You can see it here. Okay, I will show API monitoring also. So if you go to uh, API monitoring, right, you can select the environment. You can select your API basically. So what was my API name? I think something called demo or time zone something called yeah flex and you can just instant you can view it so it will show all the number of requests and everything basically you can see it here it's like no so it provide a lot of metrics also let me check whether It asked me for username and let me do that. You got a successful response. You can see. So that is how we can apply the policies also. So what we have seen, uh, like uh, we have gone through some of the Kubernetes command, then we have set up the flex gateway, then we have set up the ingress. We have seen the Kubernetes dashboard, then we have applied the policies, right? So these are the things uh, right now we have done. And now we, now I, if I want to enable the HTTPS endpoint, how can I do that, right? That's another question. So let me open my Notepad++. Okay, so I have created one ingress tls.yaml. So basically, if you go to MuleSoft documentation, you will get this complete, you know, uh, this complete file. And just you have to replace your certificate. Like this is my uh, uh, certificate. This is private key. And this is my certificate, uh, you know, public key. This is my public certificate. So rest of the things, you can keep it same. And you can save this as any name. Right now, you have to apply this particular uh, TLS to your API basically, right? To your ingress basically, right? How can we do that? So, for that, uh, it's a very simple command. So, basically, I have already uh, saved my ingress file here. So, you can get this file from the MuleSoft documentation. I will going to show that also. Just you need to replace your certificates, right? So, like, I can remove this particular thing, I can say CD basically this one then i can use the command called i need to apply cube ctl apply minus f that particular file then an and gateway 
that this file has been applied now. So now we have enabled the HTTPS. Also, we have to do few changes on our API, which is published. I will go to API manager. What we have to do, we have to go to advanced settings because my API is currently published on HTTP, right? So run configuration under advanced options. I can change it to HTTPS. And here it is saying like in order to configure TLX and you, you, you will need to do it manually. I have already done that, right? So you can just save and deploy till that it's getting deployed. So let me go to google.com and let me show flex gateway TLS mule swapped. Okay, you can go to here and you want this and you can copy this particular you know uh, file basically just you have to replace your certificate make sure uh, indentations and everything is properly if your indent indentation miss it will not going to apply basically any question uh, hello no i don't see any question okay yeah so yeah so that's cool let me check whether i can access or not so yeah, it is a save and deployed okay let me close this let me close this okay so now what i have to do i have to find the url again so for that i will say mini cube service ingress minus minus url Okay, I have haven't given gateway name minus n gateway. Okay, let me access this URL for HTTPS. We have to use the second one. Okay, so what I can do is like I will just paste this. Just say HTTPS Asia slash Kolkata. Yeah, it will ask me for username password. You got a response on HTTPS also. So that is successful, right? If I try on HTTP, I should not get it. This is the first one URL belongs to HTTP. It should fail. It's failed, right? So, so that is what like uh, you can set up a flex gateway on uh, mini Kubernetes basically or Kubernetes as an ingress controller. I hope you got the concept, right? How we can do that basically, correct? Any question uh, in this demo? Hello? Uh, yeah, we can help you. Uh, I don't see any question till now. Anyone, any question? Okay, so good. Uh, I think there is a no question. So in that case, so I think I have done with my demo part basically. So like uh, that is how you can set up a flex gateway, you know, in your uh, flex gateway uh, using a ingress controller or Kubernetes as an ingress controller. Correct? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Uh... There is one question. Can we access Minikube by other Windows portal? I mean, no, no, like it have its own uh, portal. So you have to use that basically. It have its own portal basically, right? So like when you say Minikube dashboard, it will open his own uh, dashboard, like uh, Kubernetes portal. So that comes with each and every Kubernetes instance basically from like you can monitor and everything from there. Ports, ingress and everything like you can monitor from there. Is this answer your question, Satish? Yeah, you can do like you can access right you can definitely like once you deploy a kubernetes like a mini cube uh, there right you can definitely access the wave version using the urls basically it's possible like from linux os anywhere like doesn't matter but see as i mentioned like it's like uses of mini cube basically it's it's a mini version of kubernetes right so for learning purpose or like you can use that mini cube like you know 
such is like it contain all the features like which comes with uh, comes with you know uh, your kubernetes like but it is not recommended to use this in the production basically mini cube that for practice purpose and that's fine like it it's it's just a mini version of kubernetes it doesn't contain all kubernetes have basically okay but for like uh, now let's like whenever like all the commands and everything what you are firing here right it will be the same command that you can fire on your elastic kubernetes service or EKS or whatever like it's they are also using the cube ctl utility right so mini cube is also using the cube ctl basically the way of working is same but uh, like uh, it is recommended uh like you know for like k3d and mini cube not for the production basically you can use for the development purpose or like learning purpose and you know those kind of things okay so let's start with quiz quickly i think nobody have any question yeah i think can start with that Okay, let me start and share the screen again, and like you know, we can start with the. Few. I hope you understand, like you know, what what are the advantages we are getting out of this particular thing, right? I wish you can see my screen here, again, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see. So, guys, like you can nominate yourself for the next meetup speaker and suggest a topic as well. Then, like, uh, what is next? You can like uh, share anything using this hash MuleSoft meetups. You can join a meetup, Surat MuleSoft meetup group. At the end, you will get a survey feedback form. Please fill that and provide the honest feedback. If you have any issues, you can just uh, contact meetup at the mulesoft.com. Okay. So I will just start with quiz. Bef like before I start with quiz, does anybody have any question? Because I will put one line here now. Guys, I, like today we don't have a cow. And sorry for that again, because we don't have a cow master here in the meetup. <laughs> So we'll follow the old approach. Let me stop the recording.